It is Friday. It's about 1.30 in the morning in the a.m. This is a little follow-up to the information I gave you the other day about the patient in Texas who has now since died. And this would be the USA Today. I think it's the same article. It looks the same. But the point that I'll be making is... This experimental drug Rincidofovir. Well, I showed you that he was getting something experimental. I read some things that said that um, it showed promise in in trials in animals. But I also found some other things to where some other doctors with big brains have said that they have not heard that it has been successful in any trials with animals, but they have not read anything like that. So let's go a little deeper into the company, Chimerics. And let's look at, first of all, this person here, M. Michelle Berry. She is the CEO of this company, Chief Executive Officer of Operations. Since April of 2014, she joined them in 2012. She was a CMO at Pharmacet, a company focusing on the development of nucleotide analogs for the treatment of hepatitis C from 2007 until its acquisition by Gilead Scientist. Her expertise includes the design, early development, medical governance, clinical strategy, and product life cycle, cycle management of antiviral compounds. Previously, this Dr. Barry was the Vice President of Viral Diseases, Clinical Pharmacology, and Discovery Medicine at GlaxoSmithKline, where she was responsible for the early development of compounds for the treatment of HIV, hepatitis viruses, and hepatic fibrosis. She got her MD from the Medical College of Georgia, her Master of Public Health, at Emory University, she completed her internship and residency in internal medicine at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, a senior fellow in infectious disease at the University of Washington, Seattle, where she conducted research in HIV transmission and acute HIV infection, board certified in internal medicine and infectious diseases. So this CEO here is who you'd want to be thinking about running the show, at least the title of CEO. We do have other things that you can look over here. Senior management team, etc. All you have to do is Google Chimerics. It will bring up your search and you will be able to look for yourself about this company. All right, they announced earlier, a few days ago, um, they were applying for you know, emergency applications authorized by the FDA so they could give it to the Ebola virus victims. And you see here, they did get the okay. Emergency applications were granted by the FDA. And we'll have a statement by the company. They are committed to working with global health organizations, government agencies, in the fight against this Ebola outbreak, said the CEO of the company, Michelle Berry. 
based on in vitro data from work conducted by the CDC and the National Institutes of Health suggesting rincidofavir's activity against Ebola. We are hopeful that the drug may offer a potential treatment for Ebola virus disease during this outbreak. As we've seen, they gave the experimental drug to the Texas patient and he was too far gone for it to work or it just flat out don't work. Let us continue. <clears throat> Data collected over years of clinical development of this drug have allowed us to progress this compound into phase three programs for cytomegalovirus and adenovirus infections and provided information on the safety and dosing of this drug to allow it to be explored as a potential therapy. They're exploring, they're experimenting potential treatment for Ebola and they're working closely with the FDA to finalize clinical trial protocol to assess the safety, tolerability, and efficacy of the drug in patients who are confirmed to have an infection with Ebola. Testing at the viral special pathogen branch of the CDC revealed in vitro activity of the drug against Ebola virus that was similar to that seen in test tube assessments against other viral diseases such as adenovirus and smallpox. This is an oral nucleotide analog, supposedly shown broad spectrum in vitro antiviral activity against all the five families of DNA viruses that affect humans, including viruses in the herpes virus family and adenovirus. Supposedly shows no evidence of kidney or bone marrow toxicity. 900 people treated to date. Building on the positive phase two results and pseudomegalovirus prevention, and we initiated the phase three with positive data from Suppress will support their initial regulatory submission for the prevention, prevention of CMV infection in adult hemopoietic cell transplant recipients. Merricks is also working with the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority to develop this drug as a medical countermeasure against smallpox. They have received fast track designation from FDA for CMV, adenovirus, and smallpox. All right. Now we're going to take a little look at their money. Big pharma means big money. Whether they cure you or not, they're going to get paid a lot. <clears throat> this comes a statement from the CEO, Miss Barry. During the second quarter, we've successfully completed a follow-on offering of common stock. We're now in a strong financial position to fund our research and development programs, including the recently initiated pilot portion of our Rincidofavar Phase three study to treat life-threatening adenovirus infection in pediatric and adult patients. We're pleased to add to our board new directors who bring experience in regulatory approvals. That's key, regulatory approvals. And commercialization of important medicines. We offered common stock in May of 2014 with a gross proceed of 119.4 million. In June, five new directors were added to the board. And here is your phase three suppressed trial, pilot study. We're going into the second quarter, we supposedly had a net loss of 11.7 million. We 
the news for the second quarter. It's an increase to 0 0.9 million compared to 0 0.8 million for the same period a year before that. It's due to an increase in the second quarter of 2014 and reimbursable expenses associated with their ongoing contract with the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority. Their research and development expenses were $8.1 million for the second quarter of 2014 compared to $6.3 million for a year before that. The increase is primarily due to the effect of increased costs related to the ongoing enrollment of Phase three trial. Okay, loss from operations with $11.6 million for the second quarter of 2014 compared to a loss from operations of $7.7 million from a year prior. And they're saying it costs more for phase three trials than before. Okay, and we get to the bottom here. The balance sheet as of June the 30th, 2014, included 200.6 million in cash, cash equivalents, and short term investments, 7.1 million in debt. 35.4 million outstanding shares of common stock. Pretty much your standard good statements about your company. Your forward looking statement. Okay. But what we do know is this man is dead. What we do know is he got the experimental drug, Rincidopavir. And like I said, either this man was already past the point of no return and could not be helped, or this drug flat out didn't work. However, they're going to go ahead and produce it for the smallpox and everything else that I showed you and what the writing said. And it looks like they're going to be given the okay to give it to other infected Ebola people. So, it looks to me, just my opinion, that it's possible that this drug could be effective in other types of virals, but I'm going to say they need some, you know, real infected Ebola patients, and they're kind of just like experimenting, it's trial and error, Let's see if it works on this person, if they die, then they were going to die without it anyway, obviously, more than likely. And maybe we'll take it and we'll tweak it and see if this works and that works. And then we have to wonder what is the government doing? Are they actually allowing a little bit of this stuff to really get in the in the country? I mean, why do we have two survivors that supposedly had Ebola, the doctor and the nurse, and they took a whole different thing, and it's supposedly either they caught it early, and that's a reason for their recovery, and it worked with that drug, or something more. But they supposed to have survived after being treated with a different substance. Now we have this substance, this guy tries this because there's none of the other left, he dies, you see where this is going, pharma's making money. Whoever makes the other one that supposedly works is going to make big money. This one here, looks like you got one strike on you so far, but you're still going to make the money. I wanted to show you about the company Y'all give this stuff some thought and check it out.